and welcome back. Now, the title of this video, as you can see, is a plea to stop leaving your serial.print statements scattered about your code um, because it, it's just not good for the code. Why? Well, first of all, let's think about it. A serial.print statement that you're using for debugging, it's data coming out the serial port, right? Basically, the TX pin on your Arduino or whatever microcontroller you're using. Uh, normally, as in this case, coming down the USB port, right? So you can debug it nice and easily. Or if you're using one of these sort of FTDI type things, uh, those two wires go to ground and the TX pin directly on your chip. Uh, same thing, right? And I do that all the time in my things. But serial.print statements, yeah, what's so bad about them? I want to have a quick shout out for PCBWay, sponsors of this video. Now, as well as giving you 10 pieces of PCB for $5 and assembly options and all sorts of different things like custom parts, I want you to look at the top of this web page here. Look, you can see there's the PCBWay 4th Annual PCB Design Contest. Let's see what that's about. Now, this page contains everything you need to know about the PCB design contest from PCBWay. Uh, if you think you've got a PCB and a project that's uh, worthy of attention, look at the overview on here. You can watch the video and it gives you all the information you need. Remember, though, that the timeline is from August 2021 to November, the last day in November 2021. So get your skates on. This year, the themes are IoT, robotics and whatever theme you think you might fall into if those two don't meet your needs. And of course, the competition has some rules. Here they are all specified for you. Don't forget to read them before you submit. Now, the prizes are definitely worth having, as you can see here. First prize, $1,500 in cash, plus $200 worth of coupons. And then you can see the second and third prizes. And in fact, there's even more. If we scroll down a little bit more, there are various other prizes available for those who have submitted the project. Now here are some of the entries for the IoT theme and as you can see there's a robotic theme. People have uh, submitted stuff and whatever topic you think your project might uh, drop into if it's not one of these two. And believe me, even if you're not going to submit something yourself, you should really go and have a look at this. Some of these projects are outstanding. So don't forget, have a look at the PCBWay 4th PCB Design Contest and at the same time look at their wonderful PCBWay website where you can get 10 pieces for five dollars well worth looking at but serial.print statements yeah what's so bad about them then well first of all let's think about this you need serial.print statements what's that not me you're not using them well to debug a program to find out where you are and what you're doing at any stage put in serial.print statements the trouble is you put a few in you go okay got that but that bit there isn't quite working i'll just put another couple around that to find out why this value isn't quite what i expected it to be and before you know it you've got 50 serial.print statements in and then funnily the eureka moment arrives yay my program works great switch it all off put it in a box Ta -da! except that's the problem as I found out during my ESP32 web radio project, you start leaving serial.print statements everywhere, and there's two things that happen. One, the program is bloated, significantly so in some cases, okay, because all those serial.print statements um, take up room, don't they? Or first of all, if you just use serial.print string, that's your SRAM, that's your runtime memory that it's using for that. Now, yes, you can put the, uh, the F macro in front of that to put it into program memory but then you're using up program memory aren't you as well so in a big processor like the sp32 lots of memory not a big deal one way or the other really a little tiny processor like this though you know you only got 2k memory there easy to fill up you really don't want that cluttering up your memory what at runtime or indeed at storage time and secondly all those serial.print statements take time significantly so in some cases going back to my esp32 web radio project even outputting at 115 200 bits per second it slowed down the processing enough so that i was getting terrible terrible jitter on that radio you couldn't really quite hear it properly anymore and that's with a fast processor and everything else because at the end of the day your uart that's your universal asynchronous receive transmitter that's built into here as part of like a, a CH340G or um, an FTDI, something like that, that transmits all this stuff. It's relatively slow compared to what your processor is. Well, not just relatively slow, it's hugely slow. 
and that takes time. So if you've got your program now working, that Eureka moment's arrived and it's ta-da, and you just leave all those serial.print line statements in there, it means not only have you bloated the program significantly, secondly, you're slowing it down now forevermore because every time it hits that serial.print, it chucks it over the wall to the UART and go, here, I've got this debugging statement for you, except that you're no longer interested in it. It just takes forever and it slows the whole thing down. So what can we do about it? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, I'll come on to the most sophisticated solution, which I'll put at the end of the video because it's, I don't think it's really suitable, to be quite honest, for something like a little tiny Arduino. Um, yeah, you can try it out by all means, and for smaller programs, it might work just great. But we are limit, limited to our memory, aren't we, on the Arduino? So it might not be the best solution, but you can have a look. If you look, see this bar that's running across the bottom of your video, if you put your mouse on the video, uh, that's split up into various chapters now, and each chapter has got a title. And right at the end, probably around about this position, I'll put the, the solution that I'm using on my ESP32 web radio. Um, and it's it's a full-blown library, not written by me by any means, no. And it's it does everything you'd ever want from a, a sort of a debugging monitoring type solution. But I'm looking more focusing at things like Arduino, th simple things that we can do. Even if you only take the very first suggestion that I'm going to propose, you'll save yourself program space and program speed okay now obviously i'm going to put a really silly program on here something really simple just to sort of emulate what you might do in real life of course we're probably looking at something like this you know a real project that's running all various bits on it much more complex and you know one part of it isn't working quite the way you want and you're trying to debug it so okay in real life it's like this for the demo we're going to use this okay let's let's cobble together a simple program that can illustrate this. Right, here we are then. So this is a, a do-nothing program, but it illustrates the point. Okay, now if we have a look at this code, forget the fact this isn't written in the Arduino IDE. It works just the same, exactly the same. In case you're interested, this is Platform.io, basically Visual Studio code with Platform.io added onto that, and uh, very good it is too, but I'm not going into that. Right, so this is a noddy program, right? Uh, here we've defined a little function that just adds one to the value you've given to it. And it's got various serial.print statements in it, just the sort of thing you would have if the, this were a real program. So you're, you're saying, oh, I've received this and I'm now coming back out of this routine. Here's your setup. Uh, and it says, yeah, I've done my setup and it's complete. Incidentally, as an aside, I would always recommend you put a serial.print in your setup because otherwise you might not realize that there's something in the setup that's causing a problem. I've had that before where you're trying to set up SPI, um, where you, you say go and it just hangs. It's waiting for something in the deep dark bowels of SPI code and it never comes back. And you think, what's going on? Why is my code running? Well, never mind your code running, it hasn't even got out of setup yet. So I always put one at the end of the setup just to say, yeah, I'm running but we'll come on to how we can uh, change this to make it more efficient. And then of course we have our loop here and all this loop is doing is saying, look, I've got a counter here. Um, I'm adding one to it by calling this routine at the top and uh, coming back again and then delaying for five seconds, emulating some other processing that's going on. But as you can see, it's liberally scattered with serial.print and serial.print line statements. Okay, brilliant. Pretty typical, I'd say, and I do this all the time, except I've, I've moved away from serial.print now and um, turned it into something else because I don't like leaving all these serial.print statements in there. Okay, what's that? Comment them out. Co comment. Oh, I see. Yes, I see what you mean. You can comment them out. Well, of course you can. Yes, I mean, to get rid of, you know, that serial.print statement, you can just put two, two hashes in front. There, gone. Okay, won't be compiled. It's just a comment now. The end, surely. And then you discover, you know, 10 minutes down the line, oh, I need these comments back again now because I've done something else. And you have to go through and uncomment them. Come on, human nature being what it is, you get to the point where you think, I can't be bothered anymore. I'm just leave them in there. Done. Yeah, and that's the problem, isn't it? Which if you could do it with just one line, isn't that so much better? And just before we do that, let's just see this running. So you see the actual debugging lines coming out, which is no magic at all, just, just works. So I'll bring up the um, call term 
window because uh, I like using that. There it is. Blank. It's not connected yet. So if we connect, it will restart that Arduino because I've got it set to do that. There we go. Right away, there we are. Right. So that is now a typical sort of output that you might get from, you know, your serial prints. It, it just does this. Now, there's a few things not quite right with this, is it? One is that um, you can't really tell at what point anything's been returned here. You know, it's just a whole list of things. Now, cool term will allow you to put date and time on the front, which I use all the time, so that if you're monitoring something long term um, and something comes out, you know, 10 minutes time, you can come back to this window and go, ah, oh, there it is. That's that thing that happened at 10 minutes ago when I tried to receive the temperature, say, from an outside sensor. Yes, a very topical topic for me. Mm. Okay, anyway, but apart from that, yeah, this is sort of pretty much what it's doing, isn't it? Yeah, okay, nothing special. Now let's go and change this code here to something that does it differently. Ta-da! Now, what I've done here is changed all the serial.print and serial.print line statements to debug and debug line. Needless to say, as that little pop up has just proven to you, it goes, what on earth are you doing, Ralph? What is debug line? What is debug? I've no idea what that is. I'm not going to compile it. Quite right, too. But with the um, simple addition of a define line, which you've used many times, I would imagine, we can, we can make this work, can't we? We can make this work. So it requires a small understanding of what define does. Let's get rid of that comment up there and we can use that space. So if we put in hash define, now normally you might say something like hash define LED pin 13, right? So you've defined a meaningful name like LED pin and you've given it a textual substitution value of 1313. So if we were to do that, LED pin 13, you must have done this before. It's probably in the examples that even Arduino give you. You're using a meaningful name here. And what it represents is this here. Now, what the processor does is say, right, you've asked me to compile this code. I'm going to look for all these textual substitutions that you've put in with the use of define. So wherever I see the letters L-E-D-P-I-N, which is just a little string to it, means nothing to it, it goes, I will substitute that verbatim with whatever you've typed after it, 1-3. So no semicolon, don't need that. It isn't code we're doing here. This is textual substitution. So I'll whiz through the code and substitute wherever you've you've put um, LED pin with 1-3 behind the scenes. The very thing you as a developer or coder are not supposed to do. You're not supposed to use magic numbers like 1-3. What does 1-3 mean? What does 48 mean? 42. Well, all right, 42 means the meaning of life, universe, and everything. But apart from that one number, magic numbers have no meanings, right? And in a in a commercial environment, you just would not be allowed to use these magic numbers. You must use a meaningful name. So somebody reading a digital write uh, would see LED pin and goes, ah, you're writing to the LED pin, not digital write 13 comma high. And you go, well, what's that doing then? What's, what's 13? Is that some special thing I should be aware of? Okay. So that's fine, and I'm sure we're all using that and have used it in the past, fine. But we can go a step further than that. If we can substitute text, like 1-3, for LED pin, why can't we substitute other text for other things? So what I'm proposing is this. Right, so if we look at these two lines at the top here, we've defined a debug and a debug line with a parameter, we say brackets, x, which is like a placeholder for a parameter. And we say, I want you to change debug x into serial print x. And ditto debug line as serial print line x. Whatever's, the, whatever's in those brackets and the preprocessor doesn't care, it goes, well, whatever you've typed in those brackets, quotes, some other characters, end quotes, it doesn't even know that that is a string as such, right? It just takes the entire contents and whaps it in there. So now if we hover over debug received value, look at that. It says uh, define debug serial.print expands to serial.print received value. Amazing. What's that? So what have you achieved here? What have we achieved? Well, <laughs> actually, we've achieved nothing so far because instead of writing serial.print received value, we're writing debug received value, but it's still coming out all the time, isn't it? We haven't actually 
got to the nub of the problem of being able to switch this on and off at a stroke. But that's very easy. What we can do is put an if condition above this. Now, this is not a C++ if. This is a preprocessor if. So let's have a look how that might look. So here we are then. The first thing we do is define whether or not we want debugging on. I mean, have you finished your, your sketch now and it's all done and dusted and you want to put it away in the cupboard? In which case you can say define debug and you can change that one to a zero and it will switch everything off. But let's keep it at one at the moment because you're developing and you want to see what happens. So what we've now said is hash. Yeah, it's a preprocessor directive. If debug equals one, which it is, so therefore it will do the next two statements, which are these two here, the two we've just seen, great. Now, yeah, I know you're ahead of me. So by changing this to something else, but we'll make it zero because that's logical for us, isn't it? So we're saying debug zero now. Uh, so this statement here, if debug equals one, did you see those two statements there dim? That's because they're no longer going to be compiled. The compiler said that statement here is false. Therefore, until I hit an end if, I'm not going to even look at that code. So it, pre it pretends that these two lines are not even in there. Does that mean then that all the debug statements now are not going to come out? Mm, not yet. We need another couple of lines yet because look what's happened. The compiler now has gone squiggly under debug. It goes, I don't know what you mean by debug. We're back to the old problem, aren't we, you had a few minutes ago. Because we haven't defined it, it, the compiler doesn't know what to do with this. And all we need is to put an else in. Watch this. So what I've done is added in this hash, preprocessor directive, remember, hash else, define debug x, which is what we're putting down here, debug with something in brackets, as, uh, well, well, nothing, nothing at all. We, we said define debug x is nothing. Ditto for debug line x nothing but i keep saying x you can put anything you like in there it's a placeholder for a variable you can have a b c whatever you want we'll stick to x now the compiler has said okay the squiggles are gone now so what exactly is debug doing now so it says define debug x um nothingness so when we compile this now this statement will not be there because the preprocessor will come down and go oh look i've got a name to to expand upon and do some textual substitution. Wherever I find debug with a parameter in it, I'm going to substitute um, nothingness. So I'll come down here, finds debug, bracket, something in the middle there, and substitute nothing. That statement effectively disappears, will not get compiled. And because we've done it all at the top here, with, and it's all controlled by that one statement up here, all these debug statements will suddenly not be compiled. I don't believe you. What? You don't believe me? Okay, let's have some proof then, okay? Let's compile this little tiny program, both with debugging on and turning it off, and just see what the program size is and how much space we've taken up in the SRAM. Yeah? So I'll um, expand this window here so we can see what's going on a little bit. Right, so I'm going to compile this. Yes, all right, this isn't the way I'm going to compile it uh, for the Arduino, but it's pretty much the same. We've got the old things down here. Yeah. So first of all, let's switch debugging back on by setting the debug variable that you'd have to do in your program somewhere uh, on 1, which means these two lines, see, they've just become highlighted again. It's going to, yes, it says I'll, I'll compile those in now. I'll make sure that the debug does expand to serial.print. Yeah, so let's compile that and see how big it is. So there it is. So it's saying, I've compiled it. Yeah, amazing, aren't I? Uh, and we've used, so RAM, which is basically SRAM, your runtime memory, is 11.7%, so it's using 240 bytes. And the flash memory, where your program resides, is 6.1%, and it's using 1,966 bytes. Hmm, okay, that's one thing. So if we go back to the top here, and say, now I do not want debugging on. I've finished my program. I do not want all this serial stuff coming out the UART, slowing everything down and increasing the program size. So we'll turn it off and we'll just recompile it and compare the two. Let me make this window even bigger so that we can actually compare the two outputs. Right, let's compile and see what it says. We'll come back to that in a minute. Now it says, 
We're using 9% of RAM, 184. What did the previous one say? It says 240 bytes. So we've saved all those bytes. Basically, it's all the characters in your serial.print statement. Okay. And down here, it says the flash, the memory, is now 4.9%. So 1,586 bytes. And previously, it was 1,966. That's all those statements. Because the serial.print statement, you know, in C terms, compiles to quite a little bit. Well, obviously, it shows it here. So that is proof indeed that compiling with and without debugging um, makes a difference. Hmm? So what about that warning? Oh, that warning. Yeah, OK. Now, there are some side effects, of course, by turning off your serial.print statement. Nothing to worry about. But look at what it's saying here. It says, look, in your loop, the void loop statement uh, function, it says you've got an unsigned long called B. I oh, know, terrible name, isn't it? Uh, add one counter, and it goes unused variable B. It means you're not using this value B anymore in the code. What does that mean? Let's just go back to the code and have a look. So I'll expand all that down. So in the loop, we're saying uh, unsigned long B. Here it is. It's even got a little squiggle under it. Look. Add one to counter. But where are we using B? Well, the only place we're using it is in the debug statement. Debug line B. And what is debug line at the moment because we've switch, switched off debugging? Well, it's, it's nothingness. So these two statements are effectively gone. They do not exist as far as the compiler is concerned. So we've said unsigned long B equals add one counter. And um, we're not using that anywhere. So you get a compiler warning. So sometimes you have to... Um, adjust your code a little bit, but it's it's pretty rare to take a value that you're only then going to output on the serial port. You might do, in which case be prepared for the occasional warning. Doesn't stop it compiling. It's just it's just a oi tap on the shoulder to say, do you know you're not actually using this variable? I think you might have done something wrong because you've got a variable now. You declared it. You've done something with it, but you're not using it anywhere. That can't be your intention, surely. But in this case, it was because we've switched off the debugging. Cool. OK, that's as, that's good as far as it goes, of course. Right. So what about a, a logging or debugging system for larger processes where you've got more um, space to do stuff? Well, this is my ESP32 web radio. And uh, as you can see in this code, it's got things like log E, uh, log I, uh, log D, yeah, I know, pretty much what we just covered, wasn't it, for the Arduino type processors, except this uses a much more sophisticated way of doing it. And if I expand my include libraries, we can see here Arduino log, uh, the C++, and the Arduino log header. These two libraries are the ones that make up the full-blown logging system that I'm using on my ESP32 projects. Um, because we don't have to worry about space as such. Yeah. Now these are proper. I say proper. You know, in quotes, um, code um, examples where they have. You know, it's a class. Uh, if you look at all this here, it uses templates and stuff, and it's it's brilliant, and I love it, and I use it all the time. And there's lots of information on it on here, and I'll let. If you're already coding on the ESP32 and larger processors like that, I think you'll get to grips with this in about five seconds flat, mainly because if you just implement those two libraries, you can start using the logging as I've just showed you. There's just something in one of these files. You have to set the the log level that you want, um, but that would be pretty obvious as well. Um, and basically, you don't have to look at this ever again if you don't want to. You can just have it as a black box, but within your code, which is what was showing you just up here. You can use all these log Ds and look, you can see it says there, it expands. Now that's using, as you can see there, log print F. Previously we said, if we wanted an output a counter, we'd say serial print counter, in quotes, and then under that we say serial print line, the value of the counter. Two lines for one thing. With a serial print F, um, you can put all that on one line, and I won't go into it now, but there is a library, which I'm going to show you, that uh, allows the printf functionality to come into any microcontroller. Right, very quickly then, just to summarise this, if you go to this web page, links down below and in the GitHub, uh, this is the Arduino printf library, 
and it gives you that printf functionality where you can put variables in the same line as your standard print statement and it all comes out nicely formatted. Now I won't go into it but you can see examples and all that uh, in here how to use it but more to the point this is the actual repository you'd need to download. So this Arduino printf is specifically designed to allow it to run on an Arduino so you might want to download this and uh, give this a whirl as well if what I've done is a little bit too simplistic for you. But obviously the, the more um, sophisticated the solution the, the steeper the learning curve so you're on your own with this I'm afraid. I'm, I'm not using this particular one I'm using that one I showed you for the ESP32 the uh, logging library. But there's there's everybody wants printf I mean when I have to go, now go back to code where I can't use printf it's a real pain you think why didn't Arduino implement that? It's, it's very odd that they couldn't or wouldn't do that, but I guess other third parties now have. Okay, well, your comments will be gratefully received down there. Um, what else have you got to do? Don't forget to share and like this video if you think it's worthwhile, especially you beginners who haven't done this sort of thing before. And, um, oh yeah, if you want to subscribe, don't forget to tick the bell because they keep telling me to tell you that, so I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Okay, and um, yeah, I think, we're, I think we're done really. Great. Next week we'll do something completely different again. Um, this is sort of a beginner's video and I hope it was useful for you. So until next week, keep tuned in. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.